Hey everyone, my name is Paul, and I don't really value my safety, so I'm going to fix up this Chinese scooter and ride it. Today, I'm replacing the front brake lever. That's this piece right here. In the previous video, I inspected this scooter and discovered the front brake doesn't work at all. Two Phillips head screws hold the master cylinder cap, and then there's a rubber seal. This thing is completely empty. Where did the brake fluid go? I tried to do a quick brake bleed. Open the bleeder, pull the lever, close the bleeder. The brake still doesn't work. I think the piston seals and the master cylinder are bad. Also, check this out. The plastic sight glass dissolved in the brake fluid. Wow, that is so bad. It's just dumping out the fluid. Let's remove the old brake lever, starting with the mirror. I don't need to take the fairings off the scooter to change the brake lever, but I'm going to remove the entire front brake so I can inspect the hose and caliper. The panels are easy to remove. You only need a Phillips head screwdriver. I'm taking the back part of the fender off. It has one bolt and tabs that slide into place. Let's also remove the two bolts that hold the headlight. Finally, the brake lever clamp has two 5mm Allen bolts holding it on. Don't forget to unplug the two wires for the brake switch. The front brake hose goes through a hole in the fender. Just pull it out of there. The caliper bracket has two bolts, and there's one more bolt holding the hose onto the fork. This is the complete front brake. You can't just go to your local motorcycle shop to get Chinese scooter parts, so look at it closely so you can find one that looks the same online. Most scooter handlebars are 7 8 of an inch in diameter. My handlebars are 1 inch. The brake banjo bolt takes a 12mm wrench. This is also useful information. I found the same brake lever on eBay for $50. My caliper has this weird thing attached to it labeled ABS. A real anti-lock brake system uses a wheel speed sensor and a computer to release brake pressure if the wheel suddenly locks up and stops turning. The Chinese scooter ABS has a small spring inside that just makes your brakes weak so they don't lock up. The caliper mount bolt spacing is important if you need to buy a new caliper. Two allen head bolts hold the brake pads. Let's take them out. And these are the brake pads. Mine still have life left, so I won't replace them today. You should measure the length and bolt hole spacing to find new brake pads. I'm using brake parts cleaner to clean the caliper. Do not clean the pads. The chemicals will soak in and ruin them. This part is the caliper slider. Let's clean that too. If you're replacing the brake pads, you'll need to retract the pistons with a C-clamp. This is the metal brake spring. It keeps the pads tight so they don't make noise. Insert the first pad and push the bolts in to hold it. Now I can install the second pad. Tighten the brake pad holding bolts. Apply grease to the caliper sliders. This caliper must slide smoothly and easily. If it gets stuck, you can get uneven pad wear and the brakes will be weak. Next, install the brake on the scooter. Make sure the caliper mounting bolts are very tight. You don't want them to randomly fall out. I'm also tightening the two 5mm Allen bolts so they don't come loose. Don't forget that brake hose bolt. Feed the brake hose through the fender, then through the headlight bracket. I'm installing the old brake on the handlebar for a minute to make it easier to unscrew the hose. The brake banjo bolt takes a 12mm wrench. It's called a banjo bolt because the brake hose end looks like a banjo and the bolt looks like a bolt. Notice there is a sealing washer on each side. Now let's take that brake lever off. My brake hose and caliper are good, so I bought this brake lever on eBay for $50. Okay, let's install the new brake lever on the handlebar. The lever came with a new banjo bolt and new washers. Install the washers on both sides of the banjo fitting. The bolt needs to be very tight, but don't go crazy and break it. Take the cap off the lever and remove the seals. Fill it with DOT 3 or 4 brake fluid from the auto parts store. My brake bleeder tool is a piece of clear vinyl hose and a bottle. Open the brake bleeder, then pull the lever all the way to the handlebar. Then close the bleeder and slowly release the brake lever. Open the bleeder and pull the brake lever to the handlebar again. Close the bleeder, then slowly release the brake lever. Keep doing this until the brake fluid coming out of the caliper is clean. Continue bleeding the brake until no more air bubbles come out of the caliper. Fill the brake fluid and squeeze the lever. It should be firm and should not touch the handlebar. Squeeze the brake lever really hard and hold it. Follow the brake hose down to the caliper and make sure there are no leaks. It's good, so I can put the cap back on. I spilled some brake fluid, so I must clean it up. Dot fluid will destroy paint. 
I'm adjusting the brake lever on the handlebar and tightening the bolts. Chinese scooter mirrors always come loose, so use a bit of Loctite on the threads. Tighten the mirror on the lever and hold the lower nut. Loosen the upper nut if you need to adjust the mirror. Don't forget to plug in the two brake switch wires. It doesn't matter which one goes where. Put the brake hose behind the headlight and put the headlight back on. Now I can reinstall the fender. The front fairing goes on last. It's a good idea to leave the screws loose until you've installed all of them, then go back and tighten them. Be careful not to over tighten the screws so you don't break the plastic. With a fresh new front brake, this scooter is one step closer to getting out on the road and killing me. But don't worry, it still has plenty of other problems, so be sure to check out my other scooter repair videos.